Hey, what's up you guys? Thanks for joining me. Today, I want to discuss a case that just recently broke within the last week or so. There aren't a lot of details, but I wanted to sit down and talk about his story and take a few moments to remember a little boy named Zachary Saban. He was an 11-year-old little boy whose life was tragically cut short after his father and stepmother forced him to drink an excess amount of water as a punishment. This resulted in him developing a condition known as water intoxication, which ultimately ended his life because it was left untreated. Like I said, this case just broke, so there aren't many details that have been released yet. So this video is going to be a bit different and a bit shorter than most of my normal videos. Zachary Joshua Sabin was born on September 2nd, 2008, Wichita Falls, Texas. He was born to his biological mother Angela and father Ryan. Ryan was in the army so the family moved around quite a bit before eventually settling in Colorado Springs, Colorado. They had one other child together but eventually the two separated and both have since remarried. Zachary was part of a large blended family having nine brothers and sisters when he passed away. And I want to talk a little bit more about the family dynamic. Zachary, along with five other children ranging from 2 to 15 years old, were living with their dad Ryan and his wife Tara when this occurred. It's unclear whether or not Zach's biological mother lived nearby or in another state or what their custody agreement was but it does seem that Ryan was the custodial parent at that time. They lived in a beautiful five bedroom, 4,600 square foot home that was surrounded by woods. As I mentioned earlier, Ryan is a first sergeant in the military and his wife Tara works at a company called Tessa, which I'll talk more about in a minute. Their house was purchased for $742,000 in 2019, so it seems they were doing very well for themselves. Zachary was a fifth grader at Explorer Elementary School in Colorado Springs and can be described as a kid with a goofy spirit who was always smiling. He was mostly quiet and liked to find places to hide away with a good book because reading is what he enjoyed doing the most. When he was being social, his laugh was contagious. He also enjoyed wrestling with his brothers and playing video games, but was far more gentle when it came to his little sister. He would do crafts, read, and even play dolls with her. His favorite food was chicken nuggets, and his favorite animal was, well, all of them. Zachary adored animals and had dreams of one day being a zookeeper or a veterinarian. He had pet birds, dogs, and even a turtle. His family says that he was always looking out for the kids that were smaller than him, but sadly, no one was looking out for him on the evening of March 10th, 2020. According to the affidavit put out by the El Paso County Sheriff's Department, that day was fairly normal for the Saban family. Everyone went to work and school, and it wasn't until Tara picked up the kids from school that things took an ugly turn. On the way home, Tara and the kids stopped by her mother's house for a bit, and while there, she allegedly asked Zachary if he had drank his water throughout the day. He replied that he hadn't, and that's where things went sour. I want to give a bit of a backstory as to why him not drinking the water was such a big deal. Tara and Ryan claimed that he had been diagnosed with a hereditary urology issue and was frequently wetting the bed. So they began making him wear diapers to bed. One morning, Tara was cleaning up his diaper and claims that she noticed that it was really stinky and dark. So she questioned Zachary about whether or not he had been drinking water throughout the day at school. He was honest and said no. And from that day forward, the Saban set a rule that he must drink two 32 ounce bottles of water daily, no matter what. So on March 10th, when Zachary said he hadn't finished his two bottles, Tara was furious that he didn't follow their instructions and decided that she was going to punish him when they got home. She packed the kids up in the car and they arrived at their home at approximately 5 p.m. When they got there, she called Ryan, who wasn't home from work yet, and told him that Zachary hadn't consumed enough water that day and that he would be required to finish both 32 ounce bottles before he would be allowed to eat dinner that evening. Zachary, who was 11 years old, didn't want to drink all of that water. After all, it's likely that he had consumed some water throughout the day, and dinner was already on the stove cooking. So he was expected to finish it immediately. 
not over the course of the evening, not with dinner. It had to be right then and there while Tara stood and watched him. When he tried to refuse to drink any more water, the situation only got worse from there. Ryan arrived home at approximately 6 p.m. and found Zachary standing at the sink taking sips of water from a 24 ounce bottle. When he told his dad that he couldn't finish it, Ryan became angry. And though they didn't say this to the police in their statements because it would be incriminating, it's my personal belief that either Ryan or Tara or both, made the decision that the more Zachary complained about drinking the water, the more of it they were going to make him drink. Allegedly. It's only my opinion based on what I've read about this case so far. The other children in the home were interviewed after Zachary's death, and they each had different but similar thoughts about the situation at hand. One of them stated that it seemed like too much water for a fifth grader, and another thought that it seemed impossible for Zach to drink so much water in such a little amount of time. Zach was struggling to drink the water to the point that he was literally throwing it up at the sink. And one of the kids stated that he threw up at least 10 times throughout the course of the evening. He wasn't allowed to put his water bottle down. And the more that he struggled to drink through tears and vomiting, the more the Sabins made him drink. While this was happening, the rest of the family went and sat down in the dining room and ate dinner, telling their other children that they weren't allowed to go into the kitchen because Zachary had vomited everywhere. Ryan went into the kitchen at one point during dinner and lectured him about responsibility and told him that he was drinking the water too slowly, which was causing him to, quote, get air in his stomach, which caused the water to sit on top of it. He then told Zach to burp it out and keep drinking. Tara told him to just get it over with so that he could eat dinner and stated multiple times during her interview that Zachary was, quote, being dramatic about drinking the water. They even made him wash everyone's dishes through his sobs. Shortly after dinner, Ryan went out to the garage to work on Tara's car while she started getting the other children ready for bed. The young children went to bed at approximately 7 p.m. while the other children were told to go to bed at approximately 9 p.m. The whole time that this was happening, Zachary was forced to stay in the kitchen and continuously fill up his water bottle and drink it. He continued to cry and at some point started to complain that his feet and shins were hurting. However, Tara ignored his pleas to stop drinking and just go to bed. When they didn't allow that, he physically fell to the floor while the Sabins claimed that he was just throwing a fit and being dramatic about drinking the water. Ryan came in from the garage and told Zachary that he needed to get up off the floor and when he didn't listen, complaining that his head hurt, Ryan kicked his leg and told him to get up again or he was going to kick him harder. When Zach still didn't listen, he then kicked him a second time because he was quote, flailing around and putting on an act. Ryan then tried to force Zach to stand up, and when he let go, Zach fell backward and hit the back of his head on the ground, as if he couldn't stand. Because Ryan believed that he was continuing to throw a fit, he picked Zach up and took him outside on the deck so that the cold air could snap him out of his tantrum. He allegedly left him out there for a few minutes before bringing him back inside and laying Zachary down on the floor. At one point, Ryan got so angry with him that he grabbed his face and screamed that he was so mad that he could hit him. He also told him that he was going to make him pack up all of his belongings so that he could go and live at a homeless shelter. After a few minutes, Zach fell asleep and both Ryan and Tara could hear him snoring. Tara claims that she tried to wake him up, but he was hardcore sleeping and wouldn't get up. He then allegedly sat straight up in the floor, crossed his legs, slumped forward, and began snoring yet again. At approximately 11 p.m., when Tara and Ryan decided that they were done with it, Ryan told Zachary that it was finally time for bed. Again, still not allowing him to eat anything, despite the fact that he had drank all of that water and hadn't eaten anything in nearly 12 hours since lunch that day at school. When Zachary stood up to get ready for bed, the Sabins noticed their son acting incredibly strange. He again said that his head hurt and was walking laps around the kitchen island, not saying a word, but making grunting noises. He then walked into the mudroom and stood facing the wall without saying anything. When he walked back into the kitchen, he walked straight into the kitchen cabinets as if he couldn't see that they were there. Ryan told him to go to bed, but Tara decided to follow him when she noticed that Zachary had grabbed on top of the railing and said that he didn't want to go downstairs where his bedroom was located. Once she managed to get him down the stairs, he continued to just walk around aimlessly, at one point just standing in front of the air hockey table. Ryan followed and allegedly helped Zach change into his pajamas and put his diaper on. 
He claims he put him into bed around 11.15 p.m. and told him he loved him while he was stroking his head. He noticed that at one point, Zach looked up at him with wide eyes as if something had startled him before eventually falling asleep. The Sabins then went upstairs and went to bed as if nothing had ever happened, leaving Zach in such a terrible state. The next morning, at approximately 6.15 a.m., Ryan allegedly went downstairs to wake Zachary up and found him with blood on him and foam coming out of his mouth. He then went upstairs to tell Tara that Zachary was dead. Rather than immediately calling 911, he only called after Tara told him to do so. Upon arrival, authorities noticed that there was blood and other bodily fluids on the top left corner of his Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle sheets, and that he was wearing a long sleeve shirt with a blanket covering the lower half of his body. Zachary had foam coming from his nose and mouth, and his pajama bottoms were on the floor near him. Under the blanket, he only had a diaper on, and authorities immediately took notice of a mark on the right side of Zachary's neck. The coroner pronounced him dead at the scene. An autopsy was performed, which took approximately three months to get back, which is why all this information is coming to light now. They determined that he died as a result of forced water intoxication, and he also had blood force trauma. His death was ruled a homicide. Obviously, DHS was contacted, and the other children were immediately removed from the Sabin's care, and interviewed by the police. Both Ryan and Tara Sabin have now been charged with first-degree murder, child abuse resulting in death, and six count of misdemeanor child abuse for the other children being witness to what happened to Zachary. They have since turned themselves in and are currently being held without bail. I want to talk a little bit about water intoxication. The definition states that it's also known as water poisoning, hyperhydration, overhydration, or water toxemia. It's a potential fatal disturbance in brain functions that results when the normal balance of electrolytes in the body is pushed outside safe limits by excessive water intake. It's pretty uncommon for this to happen by itself, and it's not likely that you would poison yourself with water naturally. However, a common reason for water intoxication is something called water cure, which is a method of torture in which the victim is forced to consume excessive amounts of water, which then leads to water intoxication. Water becomes poisonous when consumed in high quantities without replacing electrolytes fast enough. Therefore, when the Sabins were forcing Zachary to repeatedly drink excessive amounts of water and didn't allow him to eat and replace those electrolytes, they were slowly poisoning him, which obviously resulted in his death. I'm not a doctor, but according to Google, if water intoxication occurs, you should seek immediate medical attention, but a salty snack could help subside some of the symptoms. So had the Sabins allowed Zachary to actually eat dinner, like the rest of their children did, and they did, it's possible it's possible that he wouldn't have died from being force-fed water for four hours straight. Some of the potential symptoms include head pain, cramping, spasms, weakness in your muscles, nausea or vomiting, and drowsiness or fatigue. It can also cause seizures and loss of consciousness. The Sabins noticed that Zachary was acting dramatic and weird throughout the entire evening, especially as time went on, and right before they put him to bed. They could have easily googled these symptoms the same way that I did. They could have recognized that they might have fucked up, and they should have treated him to make sure that he was okay. Instead, when he complained of a headache, that his feet and legs were hurting, that his legs were like jelly, and when he was repeatedly vomiting, falling asleep sitting up, etc., they ignored his pleas and thought that he was being dramatic. And they let him suffer in bed by himself the entire night. Like we discussed in the Garnett Spear story, excess water can cause swelling in the brain, as well as comas, hyponatremia, or death. I am honestly pissed about this case, and it's heartbreaking to think what Zachary had to go through in his bed that night. That he was slowly being poisoned to death, and he went through it all by himself, while his evil piece of shit parents were lying comfortably in their bed, not giving a damn. Just a side note, I wanted to mention that Tara works at a place called Tessa, which ironically is a domestic violence center. Their site says that they quote, empower victims of partner violence to take back their life that is rightfully theirs. And they also help children and teens as well. So they advocate for victims, yet still to this day, they're employing a woman that jointly murdered a little boy. She is still currently employed there and has remained an employee over the last three months pending an investigation, although she is currently on unpaid administrative leave. I usually try to stay neutral on things the best I can or keep my opinions to a minimum, but I cannot keep my mouth shut in this investigation. I think they are disgusting and I hope they fucking rot. 
When more things come to light about this case, I may make another video, but for now, this is all the information that I was able to find. Let me know what you guys think about this story down in the comments. What kind of punishment do you think the Sabins deserve? Let me know. I want to hear from you guys. But that's all I got for you today, guys. Thanks for watching, and as always, remember the name, Casey Shane. I'm out. I will never be able to cuddle with my Zaccaroni ever again. I will miss my Zac attack, sweet nature. I will never be able to hear his contagious laugh. This is by far the hardest thing I've ever had to endure in my life. No parent should ever have to bury their child. I remember going into his room many weeks after he passed and finding a book. Still open to the last page he read and tucked under his pillow. Zachary's stepfather also found room to express sympathy for the father and stepmother charged with the forced water intoxication of their son. Take a moment and hug your kids, keep them close to you, and most importantly, if you are a struggling parent, don't be afraid to ask for help.